Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Kay, and this is the next lecture in the Heat Transfer Power in the Environment module. And this session is all about automotive power. Okay, so by the end of this um, series of videos, um, this lecture, you should be able to discuss the um, emission legislation that regulates uh, the automotive industry. And obviously, this is quite um, you know in the press at the minute. Understand the differences between methods of measuring um, emissions from vehicles. Discuss the strategies being developed to reduce carbon dioxide um, emissions from the automotive sector. And also we'll talk about um, the future for automotive uh, power. So I showed this um, pie chart in my um, last um, session when we are talking about the environment. And this is where the CO2 is produced in the UK, um, based on the 2015 data. Um, it takes a couple of years to collect all the data. And um, as you can see, um, transportation is um, almost a quarter of all the CO2 that's produced. Um, so it's quite significant in the amount of carbon dioxide that's going to be released into the atmosphere, and obviously, therefore, a good place to make uh, CO2 savings if you're trying to reduce the CO2 emissions overall. And kind of the, the principally, the reason why uh, transportation is about quarters of the thing is it's cheap. Um, you know, we can make engines from abundant materials. Um, you know, we can easily extract aluminium and iron from the and steel from the Earth's crust. We can make an engine block using simple processes with drilling and milling and boring. And it uses a cheap energy source. We can extract um, oil out of the ground um, relatively cheaply. We can burn it in these engine blocks that we made from these um, abundant materials using simple processes. So we're very good at setting, creating fire um, in an engine block and extracting energy from it. And therefore, it's kind of no surprise that, um, you know, last year, according to the Organisation of Motor Vehicle Manufacturers, um, we almost 95 million vehicles were produced. Um, so around 72 million um, cars and 23 million um, commercial vehicles. So there's obviously a lot of vehicles that have been produced. And again, because it's quite cheap and easy to do, um, relatively speaking. But the problem with that is, and you need to kind of um, think about this, is the amount of carbon dioxide that's going into the atmosphere per vehicle. Is if you just take some kind of, do some rule of thumb um, calculations. So if you say that one litre of fuel, um, which is about 0.73 um, kilograms, they'll produce about two and a half kilograms of carbon dioxide, assuming com complete combustion. And you could do that if you take a, you know, gasoline or uh, diesel, and did the um, the combustion balance um, that I that I've shown you in previous um, how to balance that equation in previous sessions? You can work that out for yourself. And so, therefore, if you take an average tank or a tank of sixty liters, that will release one hundred thirty-eight kilograms of di um, carbon dioxide for that amount of fuel. So, therefore, you can kind of work on this rule of thumb. I mean, it is you know got a bit of error on it, but roughly speaking. For, on average, for every 10 tanks of fuel that you fill up the car with, you're emitting the equivalent mass of the vehicle in carbon dioxide that's being released into the atmosphere. So it's quite amazing when you think about it. For each of those 95 million vehicles, if they're filled up 10 times, they've released, say, rele they've released their equivalent mass in car of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. So it's no wonder that this is you know, quite a big problem. So, um, you know, uh, unsurprisingly, um, we're trying to tackle this. And in the European Union, there's mandatory emissions targets for new vehicles. And um, from 2015, um, the emissions target has been um, less than 130, 130 grams per kilometre. And this will decrease to uh, 95 uh, grams kilometre by 2021. And um, it should be noted, actually, that this is um, what's called the fleet average. So it's OK if you're um, a car manufacturer that has a an individual vehicle that exceeds the limits. 
as long as you have other vehicles in your fleet um, that you're selling in sufficient quantities to bring the average fleet emissions below uh, the legislative limit. And there's quite heavy fines in places. Um, you know, if you, for example, from uh, 2019, you know, if you if you if you go over the limit, um, there'll be 95 euros per gram per kilometer exceeded per vehicle registered. And obviously, if you reg register in uh, tens or hundreds or even millions of vehicles, that could be a very substantial fine if you get it wrong. The, the graph here um, shows the CO2 emissions against time. So the blue is the historical average up till now. And the red line shows the emission targets that we need to meet in the future. Obviously, the, um, the data collect kind of lags um, where we are now because it takes time to collect, to collect the data. So you can see, looking at that, we're kind of on target. Um, it's looking good. Um, but the problem with it, all of these things, you get, um, as you do in engineering, you get a couple of easy wins early on. But as you start trying to reduce it more and more, you start reaching laws of diminishing returns. So at some point, we're going to need a step change, a few step changes in technology to kind of meet um, some of these targets. It's not just the carbon dioxide that's been uh, legislated against. Um, if you look back to the um, session I did on emissions, uh, we talked about the harmful emissions that um, can come that produced as a result of combustion, including carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, unburnt hydrocarbons, and particulate matter or soot. And due to the um, concerns, that, the health concerns of these emissions. The EU standards of, um, so, sorry, the European Union have set emission standards, these so-called Euro standards, and they set the acceptable limits um, for emissions um, uh, for vehicles sold in Europe. And as I say, they're called the Euro standards. So Euro one was um, established in 1992, and we're now under Euro six. And you can see the, the, what the, how the permissible limits have changed as they've kind of been decreasing over the years. Um, and so they're becoming much more and more stringent and consequently new technologies being developed to meet these standards all the time. And I talked uh, about some of those technologies in the emissions, um, in the emissions lecture.